Hello, welcome on this lovely hot Sunday afternoon. It's June 26th and we have a village poet reading on Zoom with two features, myself and Charlene Gallego, who is artist and uh, painter and poet. And we will hear from Charlene and look at her artwork. Yesterday she had an open house, so she has a lot of her art in her home. We're trying to set up a PowerPoint, but so far I wasn't very successful in finding it and displaying it because computers not always love, love me. And I'm very happy to have our guest with me here is Ambika Talwar of uh, the poet. On the camera is Joe DeCenzo and Marlene Heat from our Village Poets group and Alice Perot, who is our current poet laureate and our judge for the annual contest of California State Poetry Society, Frank, uh, Frank from Arizona, and our board member and editor of uh, California Quarterly, uh, Scott Galasso, as well as two additional people who are uh, without the images. So that's how it goes. All right, so uh, as usual, we start our readings with some open mic readers. So I think we will start uh, from Marlene Hitt. All so right. let's hear from you. Oh, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, the only poem I have with me is in my head. It's the one I wrote in fourth grade because the teacher made me stay after school and do it. And it's about at evening when the sun goes down behind the mountain tall, every sunbeam in a golden gown fades down behind the wall. And then the evening shadows come and stars come out to say, it's time to go to bed, my friends, and rest for the coming day. That's it. Oh, only thank you. Thank you, thank you. Very good. Read, Melina, would you like to read another short? Oh, she just remember. I don't have any more in my mind and I don't have any with me. Oh, All right. Marlene, can I read one of yours? Oh, yes, I go for it, Alice. Yes, you have a whole bunch. Yeah, let me go. The okay, so we'll read afterwards. Now let's hear from Joe. And okay. then when Alice comes back, she'll read another one of Marlene's. That sounds great. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is titled The Arrival. More than a week from its departure, it arrived. The antique white envelope nestled in the black pot metal letterbox, dry, crisp, and stiff at its sharp folded corners, the correspondence in antique white. The finely textured paper in minute quilting absorbing the ink of your cursive script, forming the security blanket for my message from abroad with the canceled stamp of a reigning monarch 5,000 miles away. A letter sharing a resilient container with thousands of others until it reached the satchel of my carrier en route to the black pot metal letter box. Of more value to me than the instantaneous electronic transmissions received on a glary, smudgy screen, today your sun was nearly setting before my morning light had crested. I carefully inserted the letter opener as not to offend its contents gently unfolded the stationary sublimely creased by your delicate fingernail painted vermilion as last i remember holding the page you held seeing the lines written in your hand transposing the miles to myriads of thought and it's fourth of july thank you it's 4th of July, and I haven't read this in a couple of years. <clears throat> this is based on the poem uh, titled From Sea to Shining Sea. It was written by Catherine Lee Bates. And what I did was I, I took uh, several verses of her poem, and I wrote some additional verses of my own. Oh, beautiful for hearts combined that see beyond the gloom whose brothers crawl from every land and know we still have room. America, America, thy bosom shall defend 
the virtues of our ancestors against those who offend. O oh, beautiful for those who speak above the boisterous crowd, crusading for the dignities that all men are endowed. America, America, for better or for worse, whose amber waves and proud refrains deserve another verse. O oh, beautiful for pilgrim's feet, whose stern impassioned stress, O oh, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. O oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved and mercy more than life. America, America, my, may God thy gold refine till all success be nobleness and every gain divine. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O oh, beautiful for those few words, those seldom heard in song, reminding us of principles that built our nations strong. America, America, forever shall we stride to find our brothers arm and arm where liberties reside. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Joe. You know, I, I I read... that hmm? this was supposed to be the national anthem of this country. It would be so much better if this was our anthem versus the one about guns and explosions and rockets and glare. It's been such <laughs> a beautiful song and it's just this praise, the alabaster without tears, you know, alabaster cities without tears. It's just such a beautiful image. All right, and Alice. I just want to say, yeah. I'm sure that this vision is going to be manifest very soon. We pray I'm for this. Yes, yeah, so, so let's hope. Absolutely. Alice, did you have a comment? Alice has a poem for us. I'm going to read Marlene's second poem, okay? Okay, yes. yes. And, it, and it says, come sit around the campfire. I will tell you a story. Gab Gabrielino Shaman. And then that comes from stories California Indians told by Ann B. Fisher. Great spirit, Kwawar. Look down to water and water and water, where California wanted to be. Turtle Brothers obeyed Great Spirit only after six days, lined up just so, looked like seven big islands. Stay just so, said Great Spirit, as he piled up rushes from the sky over Turtle's back, scooped up earth in great piles, made mountains on Turtle Brothers' backs. Stay just so, said Great Spirit. Then he said, those humps will make good mountains. Great Spirit Quawar stuck his fingers into the earth, planted trees, let water seep up between turtle shells to make rivers, lakes that ran to the sea. Too much quiet made Great Spirit sad, so he picked leaves from the new trees, blew on them, and they flew off singing leaves, he turned them to birds, and birds sang. Stay just so, said Great Spirit, but the Turtle Brothers quarreled. The new California began to shake and quiver. A crack split the earth. When Turtle Brothers quarrel, when clouds quarrel, when people quarrel, said Great Spirit, California shakes and quivers. Stay as I made you, said Great Spirit. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marlene. Thanks for reading, Alice. Alice is editing a Thanks. book of Marlene's poems, collecting the poems and arranging them. So this book will be coming out sometimes uh, in the fall, I think. So it's really wonderful. Thank you very much. All and right. Another beautiful follow from what? Joe? Yes, okay, I grabbed that one off the pot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was listening. <laughs> did you know? Did you know that us turtles all the way down? Oh did yeah. All the way turtles are mentioned. You mean? No, it's just somebody said somebody was having a discussion with a lady about turtles, and they said 
then what's below that turtle? What's below that turtle? And the little old lady says, young man, it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> yes, Turtle Island. That's where we are. America is a turtle island. <laughs> in, in the Indic mythology, the turtle holds the whole universe on its back. Well, that's the, the same, the same story. Yeah. The same story, yes. Very nice. These stories get around, don't they? They're around the globe. Okay, Scott will be next. Can you read next, Scott? Unmute yourself. You are muted. Yep. Okay, okay. so this is, a, this is from a, a series that is kind of a theme that's been going around uh, about where people are from. So I'm going to just give you a couple uh, heads up in there. So there's a, there is a word called pomonic. And we were talking about turtles just now. I'm from Long Island. And pomonic in the uh, Native American language means the big fish. Because if you see Long Island, that's what it looks like. Um, I'm from Long Island. Long yeah. Island. I'm from yeah. <laughs> I also, you know. And then there's two references, one to BOC. That's a Blue Oyster Cult because that was a band that came from Long Island and played at the Beacon. And uh, MSG means Madison Square Garden. Oh, so, okay. Not monosodium glutamate. Yeah. So if you hear oh. MSG, that's what that yeah. refers to. Okay. So I'm going to read that one first and then some haiku. I am Queens County Hospital in New York City and Pomonix Sandy Plains. I am St. Mary's Midnight Mass and Noontime Whistles at Lunch. I am Weber's Deli on 25th and Veal Parm at Sorrento's. I am Rockets Radio City and Cusky's Bowl in Glen Cove. From Mom's Alto Echoing hallways and dad's skyscraper dreams. I am Whitman, Gluck, and Kerouac, and the banter of Hofstra's dorms. I am Bernie Madoff, Madeline Kahn, and Francis Ford Coppola. I am mudslip soccer fields and flaming shots at Ryan's. I am BOC at the Beacon and Cream at MSG. From hot tar on asphalt oozing East River oil, I am Brooklyn's human rainbow and teenage lust by the sea. I am white out winter blizzards and summer nights of sweat. I'm known for colorful language by the lifelong friends I keep. Mm. And these are some haiku. For Scythia beneath blue skies, the flag over Kiev. Wild plum. Dogwood blossoms, a little less sky. December morning, a snowflake's filigree stamps the oak leaf. Hunger moon, between tank treads, winter wheat. May wedding, wildflowers in abundance. IRS refund. One full tank of gas. <laughs> That's it. Nicked artery, the pulse of red on green fatigues. Raptors screech, the plaintive cry of loneliness. Agrifarm, no milkweed for the butterflies. Housebreaking, an errant honeybee finds our orchid. Valley fog, a thumping bass warns car up ahead. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's mm -hmm. really nice. Okay. Okay. Now Ambika, your turn. You can still be on camera. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Our viewers. The so, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also proud to be on the board with these lovely people, Scott and Alice and Maya. And now I can, Scott, now I can say I've read with you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. So my poem, which is from 2009, is titled Gardens of the Universe. They tell her that loving is not about transcending, but taking it all, 
shadowed walls, the taste of grime. I know that, she said, a mite defensive, recalling taste of sweat, smell of tears, dirt in fingernails, roughened shirts, working away, windowless wee hours, cutting veggies, swirling laundry, fixing illusions under covers. And it is more, she insists, it is bringing spirit into the melee, a carnival melding of lies and truths, willingness to receive in spite of damage done in ages past to be joined under one single rainbow wherever it arcs. Somewhere it got lost in the rose garden where the thorns were too many, they tore apart the ark, fragmenting a mystery. They say that when the ark reappears, right there in the heart's grace is pot of gold. Sweat, smell, sex, tears, bare bones, entwined. She smiles there in spite of the stories that got her to this point in the matrix, glowing because she can disappear. Right here is the transcendence eating fruits together from tarnished pot of gold, traveling myriad gardens in many universes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now you introduce me. Now I'm going to introduce <laughs> Maya. I, um, I have the great pleasure of introducing Maya Trohemczyk, whom I met um, longer ago than I met anyone else, you remember. And she'd gone mm -hmm. on a visit to Poland. She came back with a little cushioned blue heart, which she said, Ambika, I haven't got anything for anyone, but this one is for you. And I still have it, do you I remember? remember? And she gave me a pencil from Poland too. <laughs> so yeah, so, um, so I'm gonna read about her illustrious career. Maja Trohemczyk, PhD, is a Polish American poet, music historian, photographer, and nonprofit director. She is the author editor of eight books on music and Polish culture, five poetry volumes, and four anthologies. She serves as the president of the California State Poetry Society and of the Helena Modjeska, yes, mm -hmm. Art and Culture Club, promoting Polish culture in California. Her poetry books include Rose Always, Miriam's Iris, Slicing the Bread into Light, and The Rainy Bread. And today she's going to read from this book, Bright Skies Selected Poems, um, put together by her own press, Moonrise Press. So here, Maya, here, here we are. Here's the cover. And actually, I took yeah. a picture uh, in my garden of the vines, and the book is, has a lot of pictures inside, so there is all the photographs. Beautiful red hair <laughs> looking up in the sky. <laughs> That's uh, Charlene Mason Gallego. She writes about herself. I consider myself a California girl having lived all over this beautiful state. I spent time in the Monterey uh, peninsula where I took up photography and art making. After a brief stint as a flight attendant, I uh, committed myself to the creative life, attended mm -hmm. California College of the Arts in San Francisco, graduated with a BFA in drawing and painting. While in art school, I took several creative writing classes which exposed me to new authors and poets. I have been an avid journal writer my whole life and have a deep love of words as a way to process my experiences. I have been a writer uh, to an audience of one. I, we have all been there. I've been there for many years. <laughs> Recently, I have been compelled to share it with the world uh, or at least with my intimate circles. I write to find myself, to explore the unknowables, to follow my fascination points and connect with wonder and beauty. And now let's connect with the wonder and beauty from uh, Charlene's home and her gallery. Let me stop sharing and let's listen to our featured poet. Well, hello everybody. Um, uh, Maya reached out to me because I sent a postcard for my open studio gallery launch. This one. Um, right there, yes. And so I was really tickled to, um, she invited me 
to be a part of this and I'm just really tickled to to participate in this and you'll have to um excuse me I'm a little hoarse I was <clears throat> extremely active yesterday because that was my launch um but what I'll do because it's still up I mean we brought some furniture back into the living room but the gallery is still up so and I'm gonna all I can share my art and then I can um recite one of my poems does that sound good sounds very good yes. and honestly if you have questions about any of the art that I um, am just going to, I'm going to flip the screen. Um, help me. I see my brain is fried. So tech and me are not happy with each other right now. So um, let's see, do I switch the camera, flip it? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, and also, can you hear me? Okay. Am I too loud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. Audio is okay. great. I will start with, um, and it was a very successful, I had sold quite a few paintings. Um, and so I was really happy with that because I've never um, tried to sell my work. I've never put it out there. And this one I call Beauty of Traffic. Um, and this is an oil that I did when I was in art school um, in 2004, that was my last year. And, <clears throat> That was the Bay Bridge traffic. So in San Francisco, it was rainy. And I had this little uh, point and shoot digital camera. that was a 3.2 megapixel and, and it took the most amazing pictures. So this is a oil painting based on a snapshot that I captured. Um, over here is one of my, I switched to acrylic because I developed a sensitivity to the solvents in oil painting. Um, and so this is an acrylic of my mountain. I call it my mountain because it's, um, I, I honor it and look at it every day. And it's um, one of these, <clears throat> as you know, living in this area, the mountains have personality. Mm -hmm. They speak to you. So this is called message of the mountain, number one. And then over here, and I'm going to, I could open my blinds and let you see my view. Would you like that? Yes, yes, please. Okay, all right. It might, it might because for the gallery opening, I have both my paintings of the mountain juxtaposed oh, to the so nice. view of my oh, mountain. Wow. I know where you are. I'm kind of to the left, 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 because I did this tip of, a, of the mountain that you see, I see as a kind of an, an inner distance. Yes, very nice. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so the, um, uh, me and the mountain have um, a relationship. I've been here since 2013 and um, I do a lot of devotional work um, out in my garden and um, it's just a place of solace for me. And um, I see, I get messages in the mountain um, one year, there was a green heart that showed up in the spring. It was quite beautiful. And over here is Message of the Mountain 2. Um, this one was during, um, we get the fog rolling in and it's quite lovely. And I get up very, very early in the morning before sunrise. And so I get to see some magic happen that if you're not up early, you miss it. So, <laughs> So this was um, something I captured happening with the fog and it backlit the gorgeous um, cottonwood trees out in the wash. And I just love the image so much that I created the painting from it. And then here's some of my earlier works. I did some self portraits and I was experimenting with different styles. And um, here I'm gonna move this, I have uh, layering of a thicker type style of paint right here. And it's a bit um, brooding. <laughs> so I must have been in the mood when I did that one. I don't know. <laughs> and then this one was is self-portrait with trees. And um, I used to wear a lot of hats. I still wear hats. But um, this is from um, like 2002. So this is like my second year in art school. And um, these are oil. Um, and so <clears throat> I really love oil and, and what I try to do with my acrylic is mimic the look of oil. 
Um, this is one of my poppy paintings. Um, they became, they are hugely popular with um, uh, my friends and family that collect my art. And so they insisted I keep painting poppies. So I'm gonna keep painting poppies. But, <laughs> and um, over here was the one that was inspired by the, po you know, the postcard. Um, and this is titled Poppies. I finished it, I started it a long time ago and I hadn't resolved it until recently, 2021. There was a time where this thicker profile was popular, this gallery setting, but I never, it was, it's three inches. I never was happy with it until I, I wrote, and I actually can read it to you. And it was just kind of a free form um, um, of the poppy and how much I love the poppy. So I can read that to you. Yes, please, yes. Please. Um, and the botanical name for poppy is a weird, strange, E-S-C-H-S-C-H. -S 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 so don't ask me how you really pronounce that. It's Esclosia californica. I have no clue. But golden poppies unfurl their blousy petals to greet the new day and embrace the sun's warmth. Honeybees, bathe in your pollen and nectar intoxicates your delicate petals. Blow to and fro in the hot dry winds of a Southern California summer. Oh, how I imagine vast fields of your golden happy heads bobbing in unison to a breeze beat and I am there to drink it all, drink in all of it. And then on the other side, I just did, I did just a free flow ramble and I scribbled it. <clears throat> And this one, Esclosia californica, California poppy, the golden state flower. I'll just say really quickly, I was very surprised because I grew up in California that people didn't know it was the golden state flower. I meet people all the time that don't realize that it's the state flower that you shouldn't pick it. <laughs> Poppies are the friendship flower, the good neighbor flower. They make me smile. I love seeing them on the roadside and in neighbors' yards. They show up in the pavement cracks and in vast fields, fields of golden, drifty, blousy orange. Their petals open to the sun's rays and close as the sun sets. I like to give poppy seeds as gifts. I am the Johnny Appleseed of poppies, Charlie Par Poppy Seed. I love imagining vast orange vistas of orange petals and windblown seeds scattered. <clears throat> then next season's rains come and a new generation is born. Thank you. And yes, yes. And so <clears throat> there's more of my, so you guys are getting um, a gallery tour of what went down yesterday. And I had a very nice turnout and it's the first time I've ever done it. So this was a study I did. Um, this is Degas Dancers and this is just my version of it. And then over here was a figure study. I did um, a bunch of figure when I was in art school and this was my favorite one that I did for that. I do a series of seed pods and here's one of my seed pod paintings. That's really nice, I like this one. <clears throat> Yes, I love seeds. Um, and this was my flower freestyle. This was just a spontaneous um, creation I did. And it, I was really happy with it. It actually sold, it sold. Um, and this is a gift, it was on loan from my sister. That is my sister who was here, she was helping me and our lovely cat Spunky. Um, was such a great cat. We would nap with her, with my cat Spunky. And I, we got a great little shot of my sister. Um, I do um, a whole different body of work. This is um, my gilded grids and this one's ants. And I'm working on one that's going, to, that's going to be dragonflies. And this is another one on loan from my sister's collection. These are her children. That is Sydney and Cooper in the bath. Mm -hmm. And here's my studio. And this is where I do all my stuff. And here's a bouquet. 
of cut flowers from my garden. These are natives. And behind it, those are my, um, my used palettes. And I created a stained glass window out of them. Wow, so, that's so cool. That. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And the, my newest body of work is very symbolic and has a lot of, I do trees, dendrite patterns, and um, the orbs. And this, this work is called Birthing New Worlds. And these are um, acrylic on panel, on wood panel. And this one's finished, but I wasn't ready to part with it because it's a whole new body of work. So I did not list it for sale, but this is my studio. This is um, where I do most of it. I also paint outside as well. And this is the dragonfly that's evolving. This one's gonna get a lot more paint on it. Um, so anyway, that I had, there's more, but I think you get the picture of, of what I'm about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I will flip around Back and I can re recite my poem. Is that good? Yes, very okay. good. Okay, I'm getting hoarse, so. <clears throat> so, <laughs> yeah, I've been talking my butt off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very nice. the last couple days and my, my voice is um, healing it. Um, so I'm going to, in honor of my, my, oh, is she not here? Did she, oh, she maybe left. My friend Jennifer was on, but I don't see her anymore. But um, entitled Beauty Consultant. Um, <clears throat> this is honor, this is in honor of a, of a time in my life where I um, have friendships that I still have today. My body is designed for beautiful things, like the sunrise happening as I write this. It is ever shifting, ever changing, and never the same. It is me as a witness at this moment with these eyes and these body feels. That is the miracle turning my mountain a dusty kind of pink. The kind of pink you find in an old woman's house upon her worn velvet sofa the kind of pink worn on that same woman's lips, that discontinued shade of Estee Lauder lipstick. It is here at this moment, a blending of early morning rays through moisture laden clouds, landing on the browns and tans of those easterly slopes, that forgotten shade has been reinvented, reignited for my pleasure again. And it triggers a feeling of nostalgia a feeling that evokes long ago memories, back when the action was at the department stores, in the malls, at the food courts. Us Lauder, Clinique, and Lancome girls playing with our beauty, only slightly understanding its power and becoming aware of its dangers. Us with our soft, full, painted lips, laughing together and admiring each other's feminine allure. Us applying a new shade of pink, to replace the old one for that woman seated in our chair, awaiting her makeover, her transformation. Applying a band-aid to all the disappointments of life that have sagged the smile and frowned the eyes. We were baby alchemists. It was the era of artificial excess, tortured tresses, contoured cheeks, and sexy eyebrows. What kind of magic pill were we selling? Youth in a bottle? that perfect shade of lipstick. It would be years later that the underpinnings of the artificial environment would begin to crack. My eyes would see through the crumbling remains. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It would be years later that the underpinnings of this artificial environment would begin to crack. My eyes would see through the crumbling remains that my talents were not meant for selling a man-made idea of beauty, but for reveling in the source of beauty herself. And there is no selling beauty, not ever. Beauty simply exists. Beauty is that dusty shade of pink upon my mountain, that shade of pink that grins forth from that old woman's lips. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for okay. a really wonderful tour and okay. wonderful introduction to your 
poetry, reflection, and artwork, and uh, to your mountains, which is so nice to see the same mountains I see from a different angle. <laughs> now I see how we are neighbors. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, for the rest of the uh, reading, we have two more poets, so let's have them read, and then we'll do the comments at the end, all right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Frank from Arizona, our contest judge, and we'll close with our poet laureate, uh, Alice Perot. Uh, there's a poem I wrote after watching a, a special about people going to locate the source of the Ganges River. And um, the camera crew and the, the people who were putting together the program stopped in this village and they went in because they heard rumors about this, this individual who was doing some, some incredible spiritual thing. And uh, it really captured my imagination. I wrote this poem about it. It's called the standing man, far up the path to the source in the heart of stone and ice, where Krishna as Shiva, as Vishnu, decided to descend and make manifest the beginning and the middle and the end of all things, is a temple in a town where the pilgrims congregate to rest and refresh on the journey toward the ultimatum they are driven to. And here, one among these many, who are the few among all others of the earth, has willed himself to dare to be as worthy as Arjuna and to approach the kingdom of all godheads. Trapped in his body, in the fourth year of the 12 he has offered to Shiva in bhakti, in order to grow godlier, he stands leaning on a harness hung from the ceiling, a trapeze covered in an oriental rug, as he has for so long and will for so long more, he has been swallowed whole by his sacrifice and will not leave his feet. Slumped and strained and weathering from inside, frozen in place like a waterfall, feeling neither joy nor pain, Someday soon to be no longer man, nor merely bestial, but matter and topography, the envelope of an abstraction. Here to remain until blood becomes akin to water and skin finds its family among the stone and the eyes grow cold and cavernous and the mind dissolves into the glacier that grows within. Farther upstream in the icy atmosphere at the Eden of this Genesis, among the elements of all beings and every end, there at the source of sacred Ganga, the incense six are burning in the snow, lit by those who will only choose to remain men among men. But he grows absent, though they see him, though he is there and says goodbye by saying nothing, by being what he is and is becoming, becoming nothing, becoming no one, becoming what only no one can ever know, almost a mountain and nearly snow. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. This other one is a little more lighthearted. It's a portrait of a, of a guy who came to Tucson into our life for about a year. He was kind of looking for some, I don't know, he was, he was looking for an exit off of whatever road he was traveling on. And he found Tucson, he was a poet. He was like a veteran of the Afghan war. He had some issues and stuff. Uh, he was kind of a rolling bunch of contradictions, but he was a, a wonderful guy. Uh, he was kind of roly poly and big. He had a shaved head and a goatee. So I wrote this in his honor. And it's called Thumbnail Elegy for Dan. The earth is his indignant orb to argue over. Empathetic Zen, meditator on a motorbike. When the sun goes down, the moon shines softly on the smooth, shaven hemisphere of his head. Bukowskian barfly, notepad on the table, beer bottle in his hand existential sensualist, incognito Asian, 
inmate running an asylum of one. Buddha never had this need this bad, this need to speak. Tell us, O oh ranting tantric ruminator, O oh goateed ovum, tell us where it hurts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So now we'll uh, turn our attention to Alice. I'm going to read a poem about snow because I think Frank mentioned snow. So I grabbed this one. Forgetting snow. Now snow is just a shadow of a thought. Delicate patterns in infinite forms that I can no longer see or feel. Even the sweet melting is gone. The huge icicles that grew downward from the eaves, the frozen bits on my mittens that I might lick off when thirsty, the snow I trudge through in my ungainly boots, the crunchy sound, boots falling through the icy crust, the snow I hasped half froze in as I stayed out for hours sledding. The snow that was like a comforting father when it rose up, shoveled into solid walls, towering over me during a winter of 15 foot drifts. The snow seen through windows when it first started coming down, the soft plip plip of it falling against bare trees, a sound that seemed almost sacred covering me with safety. The snow that made all evil a muffled memory from a distant time, a cloak of angels with feathery wings. Then the snow that turned to nothing, just brown mud in the thaw. Now I am sitting in an office on the edge of a desert that does not know snow. I wrap myself in sweaters when the temperature falls below 60 degrees. I complain about the wind blowing cool air between the cracks of my poorly insulated house. I worry about earthquakes, windstorms, mudslides. I complain that there is not enough rain. I cannot complain that there is no snow. Driving home from work, I see far distant mountains that have a cap of white after a winter storm. It is so very far away, perhaps I am imagining. I try to summon surprise, amazement, delight. The freeway intervenes, the flat stretches, the strip malls, cars lined up one after the other in endless following patterns, horns blaring the vast, dry, unyielding sky. I drive and drive. I forget the snow. Beautiful. Thank you. I, I was told I got two, so. Uh, <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. Um, all right, well, <clears throat> I had a long, long dialogue with a man named Bob Hart back in, uh, until he died of, in his 80s. And somehow we got into, uh, towards the end of the dialogue, he was in the hospital and we were right, still writing and he was in New York. But somehow he, he was always putting like seven pieces, seven pa packages of sugar in his coffee. He, and he did that, never got diabetes. <laughs> he died of something else. Anyway, sweet and sour for Bob Hart. What is this running relentlessly towards sweetness? Once a desire for sweetness sprang, hidden spring gurgling, there was no stopping it. Does one calculate the length to get to each sweet? Measure floor dust one must drag feet through, determine each length between one sweet and the next? Does one race? like a greased swimmer in cold water toward the goal, the faster, the better. I, for one, crave sour. <laughs> Quats, grapefruit, unsweetened tea, no honey or stevia for me. I walk slowly, have no speed, lump along like gravy. I even sleep like a turtle. Night, the endless tart lemon, 
I make hours stretch into days. Without sugar, it can all last almost forever. Like a good dry wine for long, slow sips in between the conversation. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'd like to just share a few words from one of Okay. Yeah. One more thing from uh, Ambika. To end. So I take beautiful pictures and show them on, on Instagram and then I write these things and I want to share this with you. The power of love is immense when wings spread wide to gather smiles, tears, and storms, and as containment become a canopy of all joys under the sun, this is, in essence, the foundation of ecstatic living and mystical way of beauty and the beloved. This is what we need today to dispel the agony of world corruption and malaise of deception. Let us begin this new journey now. Oh, thank you. I'm so moved. <laughs> Perfect comment to the poems and to the pictures. Yay. So lovely. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is so wonderful. So, yeah. So, this is from Ambika. Is anybody else has any comments or any? Any remarks? If not, we'll be turning off the reading. Thank you very much to Charlene for your art, for your poetry. Thank you for, to Scott and Frank and Alice for the reading. It was really wonderful to have you over. Uh, so I'm very glad we had this reading and we'll see you next time when we figure out what we do uh, in the next reading, all right? Thank so you. thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.